Hi, this is the Friday update around 11 a.m. Central Daylight Time for Hurricane Harvey. Now getting close to the coast, landfall is expected sometime tonight. This is the visible satellite shot as the sun has risen this morning, and you can see the organization of the inner core here. Uh, the eye has not fully cleared out yet, but do not let that fool you. This is a very powerful hurricane that has continued to strengthen since yesterday. Here's the radar shot from Corpus Christi showing the core of the storm. Uh, we've had for the last 12 hours or so an eye wall replacement cycle that has been underway. You'll see this small inner eye wall. I'll try to circle it better at the end of the loop here. You'll see this inner eye wall and then this outer ring that forms around it. You'll see that at the end of the loop. Uh, there are two eye walls here. Uh, this is where the outer one forms and begins to essentially suffocate the inner one for lack of a better term. The inner eye wall eventually disintegrates over time and we've started to see that here. It's only about half an eye wall at this point while the outer band is a closer to a closed circle here. And this outer eye wall eventually contracts and starts taking over for the inner eye wall. Now there are a couple things that happen when this is going on. Uh, the replacement cycle spreads out the wind field and so that is a bad thing because it increases the potential for water to be pushed around the storm over a larger area so it increases the storm surge as the wind field expands around the storm and the winds will occasionally drop off a little bit in the uh, inner core during the replacement cycle and so sometimes you'll see a very low pressure in the hurricane but relatively weak winds for what you would expect. However, when the eyewall replacement cycle finishes, often the winds will come up again because you've consolidated into one eyewall again. And if that happens here, as it looks like it may, just before landfall, we could start seeing another increase in Harvey's winds. But regardless, these winds are destructive either way. Uh, we have 110 mile per hour winds estimated right now from aircraft data. This is the reconnaissance mission that's in there right now. Air Force plane about to leave, a new NOAA plane about to replace it after this video is posted. You can see when they went in, the pressure was 958 millibars. It has fallen to 947 during the course of the flight as the storm continues to move northwest toward a landfall, likely somewhere near or north of the Corpus Christi Rockport area. There are wobbles you can see in the track from the plane that the motion changes occasionally from hour to hour and these wobbles become important for the exact landfall location, but you can see the large area of pink and purple colors here indicating hurricane force winds and winds in excess of 100 miles per hour over a region large enough that the exact landfall point isn't going to matter so much. Strong winds coming into a, a large portion of the central Texas coastline and we already have tropical storm force winds making it to shore. You can see some of these observations indicating sustained winds of about 30 miles per hour and we've already had gusts over tropical storm force over 40 miles an hour this morning as this initial rain band begins to encroach upon the coastline. So dangerous conditions have already begun over a large section of coastline and are only going to deteriorate from here as the storm continues to move toward land. Right now moving at about 10 miles per hour, it's about 80 or 90 miles away from shore. That gives you about 8 to 9 hours before the core of the storm makes it to the coastline, although it could start slowing down by that time, so there could be an additional delay. Uh, but we are we are now in it, folks, uh, in South Texas, and this is not going anywhere anytime fast. Again, the biggest problem with this storm is that it is going to reach the coastline and then abruptly stall somewhere just inland. Exactly how far inland, we don't yet know, but it's going to be remaining in the same area for a very long period of time. This is different than any storm you've seen. This is different. This is worse. This is a problem. This is something that if you've been told to evacuate from, you should have left by now and you need to be out of here. Hopefully most people are. The big problems with this storm, storm surge coming in from the water being pushed on shore as this, the system makes landfall somewhere in here. All this water near the eye and east especially of where the eye makes landfall all this water gets pushed ashore. This is the experimental storm surge inundation map from the National Hurricane Center showing the potential water rises above normally dry ground that could occur here. These red colors indicate greater than nine feet of potential inundation. These are towns and all sorts of places where people live underwater, potentially from Harvey pushing storm surge ashore. This is the number one killer in hurricane storm surge is the most life-threatening hazard in these storms, you don't want to be playing around with this if you live in these areas that are prone to inundation. And even inland though, we have all the rain coming. This is the forecast from WPC showing greater than 20 inches over this extremely large area. This is an unprecedented event here for a hurricane coming in at this intensity and stalling near the coast for days. 
so much rain coming and note how far it extends east of the landfall point. The landfall point may be down here, but far to the north and east of the center, this rain will continue to fall because as the storm sits here, all this moisture will be brought up from the Gulf of Mexico on the east side. Southerly wind piling moisture into Texas for days after landfall, continuing to bring rain. This is the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center, again illustrating that slow motion. This is a five-day forecast, and you can see it doesn't move that much. During the first three days, it's still near the coastline. You'll note that it goes in, and the current forecasts indicate that it may try to come back out over the water. Whether it actually does so is still uncertain, and how far inland it goes before it tries to come back, a little uncertain. But the bottom line is uh, it stops mattering at some point here because uh, lots of rain occurring regardless. The only wild card we're kind of waiting to see on is if it comes back over the water enough, it's possible that the system may be able to re-intensify some over the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. But that is very unclear at this point. If it were to do that, we would increase wind threats and rain for Houston and western Louisiana. The rain is actually coming regardless. Uh, any kind of track here, inland or not, is going to bring lots of rain, which is why you see this extension toward the east that brings a life-threatening flooding potential all the way into Louisiana and certainly through the Houston-Galveston area. This is, uh, again, difficult to overstate the dangers associated with the storm. You need to be taking this seriously, and it sounds like most people have. Please make sure you are doing the same. And finally, other hazards to be aware of in these outer bands as they come ashore, they could contain isolated tornadoes. We've already seen a couple of tornado warnings in this area of the central Texas coastline near Mount Gorda Bay and Port O'Connor. And in the right front quadrant of these hurricanes as they come ashore, this is always a concern. And uh, these tornadoes can be difficult to see in advance. They can occur with very little warning compared to, you know, a few minutes of warning you might get from regular tornadoes as they are moving very quickly and they develop quickly. Uh, so do have your weather radio on, listening for those warnings as they come in and be careful as uh, that can always be a concern even before the core of the hurricane with sustained winds gets toward you. And remember if you're moving inland all sorts of rain occurring uh, well inland of the landfall point even places like San Antonio and Austin could see flooding problems from all this rain so if you're running inland from the water be aware that flooding is a problem well away from the coastline with the storm do not get stuck in your vehicle that is the worst thing you can do during a flooding event is be in your car caught in running water as it doesn't take much to move your car with you in it. You don't want to be stuck there. Stay safe everyone. Uh, I might have another update later. Uh, we'll be tracking Harvey as it comes ashore. Pay attention to your local emergency management officials, the weather, uh, the weather service office in your local area, and uh, the local government. Make sure that you allow them to help you stay safe. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.